In this video, I'm going to go through required practical four, which is determine Young's modulus of a material using a simple method like the one shown in this diagram here. In my class, you'll be tested on the following CPACs. 2D, that you can reduce the percentage uncertainty in the reading, especially of the extension of the wire. And that finally, you're able to determine the Young's modulus fairly accurately. 3A and 3B, which is that you can write a clear risk assessment and perform the practical safely. 5B, that you can do some online research to find the Young's modulus of the material that you used and that you're able to compare it to the Young's modulus that you got from the uh, practical and that in your report, you can correctly reference where you got this Young's modulus. There are many methods for determining Young's modulus. For example, this one here is a common one. However, in my practical, I'll be using a different method. I'll be using this. Okay, so we've got a table and you've got a wire extended across the table locked between some wooden blocks and then the other end of the wire is going over a pulley and there's a mass hanging on the edge of it and that pulley is being clamped down. You've got a ruler and then you've got a marker like so. Okay, before you even start this practical, you need to measure the diameter of the wire. So first of all, get your micrometer, close the jaws of the micrometer and ensure that it's reading zero. So you're checking for zero error. Then put the wire between the micrometer like this, close it using the thimble, but make sure you don't squash it. And when you can feel some tension, switch to the ratchet. And once you hear one click, then don't uh, tighten it anymore because then you're going to squash the wire. Okay, make sure you take some readings at different points, at different orientations along the wire, and you find an average for the diameter because you're going to use that to find the cross-section area of the wire. Once you've done that, once you've got the diameter, you're going to measure the original length of the wire because that's from where the wooden block is closing the wire like so to the marker. You're going to change the mass on the uh, wire like this and as you change the mass you're going to record the extension, how much the marker moves by. Before you start the practical you're going to have to write a risk assessment. So things to talk about in your risk assessment. Firstly you've got a metal wire and that might snap and if the metal wire snaps, you can cut your eye or, you know, something could fall over, things like that. So you need to talk about how you're going to protect your eye, for example. And if things might fall over, for example, the mass could drop. So how are you going to prevent the mass dropping on someone's feet, especially if you're using, um, you know, heavy mass? Actually, to be honest, you want to avoid using really large masses. So I wouldn't go beyond, for example, three kilograms. I wouldn't go beyond that. Okay, how are you going to ensure people don't walk into the wire? So, for example, in my class, we use a really long wire, so maybe three, four meters. So we go across multiple tables. And how are you going to ensure that people don't walk into that wire? Because it's a very thin wire, they might not be able to see it. So all of these things, you want to write down your risk assessment, have a nice clear risk assessment, and do the practical safely. Before you start the practical, we're going to need some tables to record our results. First of all, start with the diameter of the wire. Okay, you're going to measure the diameter at multiple points in different orientations and find the average. Then you're going to write down the original length of the wire you use. Personally, I recommend using more than two meters because the bigger the length you use, the smaller the percentage uncertainty. We'll come back to that. Write down the type of metal that you use because you're going to have to check the Young's modulus online for this material once you've just determined it yourself and compare what you got to the what, what's online. Okay, once you start the practical, you'll have to write down the weight that you're hanging on the edge uh, of the pulley or the, over the pulley and the corresponding extension that you get. Okay, remember this is not original length or fine length, this is the extension that you're recording. So how much it extends by as you put the weight on it. Once you've done the practical, it's time to analyze your results. Ultimately, we want to plot a straight line and use the gradient or the intercept. So let's look at our equation. So we've got Young's modulus is equal to stress over strain. Now instead of E, I like to write YM so they don't get mixed up with energy and things like that. Stress is force over area. Strain is change in length over length. So you've got a fraction divided by a fraction. Flip the bottom fraction over and multiply and you get this equation. There's multiple things we can plot on the Y axis and X axis. All of them are correct, which is depends on what you prefer. So for example, if I plot extension on the Y axis, against um, force on the x-axis, then my gradient should be, uh, that should be a straight line going through the origin. So we shouldn't really have an intercept unless you've got some kind of error or it's probably a zero error of some sort. Um, the gradient here is going to be length over cross-section area, which you would determine using your diameter times Young's modulus. So therefore Young's modulus will equal length over cross-section area times gradient. Now, if you prefer, you can just plot force against uh, extension and the other way around so we flipped it around in which case your Young's modulus is going to equal gradient times length over the cross-section area or maybe you just prefer to plot stress against strain in which case get your table 
and add extra two columns to it. One is for stress and one is for strain. So for each corresponding weight, you can determine the stress by doing the weight divided by the cross-section area, which you would have determined using your diameter. The strain can be determined by doing extension divided by the original length from your early measurements. And then if you plot this as a graph, stress against strain, your gradient is going to equal Young's modulus. If you do evidence some of your CPACs, you should write about the following things in the discussion section of your booklet. So for example, why is it better to use a long wire? So if you try using this practical with a one meter wire, you're going to find that the marker moves by less than a millimeter, which is really difficult to measure. And there's going to be a big percentage uncertainty with that kind of measurement. So instead, I prefer using wires that are as long as four meters long. Okay, in which case you're going to get at least four times the extension which means that the percentage uncertainty in your readings will be lower. Okay, so make sure you write about your percentage uncertainty, why you chose to use a long wire. Another thing you can discuss is how did you ensure the wire didn't stretch beyond the elastic limit? The elastic limit is when you stretch it so much, it doesn't even go back to its original length. So while you're doing the practical, you might want to remove the weight, unload it, and just check that it is actually going back to its original length. Because once you go into elastic region, there's no point, more, no more point taking any more uh, data because we can't use that section anyway. Finally, what range of force and extension did you use when you used your gradient? Okay, for your gradient. So when you plot, for example, force against extension, you should know you shouldn't be measuring beyond the limit of proportionality, which is where the line stops being a straight line. You should only use between here across this section here where it's a straight line and use that for your Young's modulus. Okay, final step. Now that you've got your Young's modulus, go online and find the Young's modulus for the material that you've been working with. So for example, I was working with stainless steel and I got 180 gigapascal according to this website here. I'm going to write down the link. I'm going to reference it in a minute. So I can go on to my lab report in the discussion section. I might write something like this, that my Young's modulus that I measured was 120 gigapascals. On the internet, it said 180 gigapascals. I should calculate the percentage difference which is the measured value minus expected value and modulus, so ignoring negative signs, divided by the expected value, which is what we found online, 180, and times 100, you get 33%. So in, in the discussion section, I can write something like this. This means that the percentage difference is 33%. Okay, and then finally, you need to make sure, that, see, that's why I wrote those square brackets with the one, because I'm going to reference where I got that 180 gigapascals. I'm going to give uh, something like this in the reference section, which is the link to the website that I used and also the date that I accessed that website.